This is my build of the RA-5C Vigilante of RVAH-1 Smoking Tigers. They are the fourth set of planes and the fifth build overall in my 1968 USS Enterprise project, the ship in 1-720 and all the Carrier Air Wing 9 aircraft in 1-72. Here's my references list. The Squadron's publication ARA-5 Mini in Action Book provides excellent diagrams and photos. The most definitive reference is GRS Video's DVD USS Enterprise 1968 Tonkin Golf, which is almost 90 minutes of flight deck operations footage taken by actual crew members. The Enterprise's 68 cruise book is available online, full of information and photos. Also, I took about 20 walk-around photos of the Vigilante at the Pima Air Museum in Tucson, Arizona. Finally, an internet image search provided more diagrams and photos. Before I go on, I should explain why I built two planes when there is only one squadron of vigilantes on the 68 Enterprise. When searching the kits for this project, all the sites said if you're building a 1-72 vigilante, the trumpeter kit is the way to go. So I bought one and put it in the stash and moved on. When I later read the squadron mini in action book, I learned there were early and late versions with differences particularly noticeable at the wing roots and intakes. The early version wing terminates at the fuselage. The late versions has a winglet from the wing to the forward edge of the intake. The trumpeter kit is a late version. And sure enough, the 68 Smoke and Tigers flew the early version. So the trumpeter kit wouldn't work and I would need to find an early version kit to build. So I ended up on eBay looking for kits where I could see the parts and know I was getting an early version. At eight and nine bucks a piece, I ended up buying two just in case there were any missing parts. Both came virtually complete. When looking at the 68 cruise book reference photo, I noticed two RVAH-1 vigilantes sitting side by side with very different markings. While both had the same tail, one had a wavy line between the gray and white and a closed jet intake warning, while the other one had a low straight line between the gray and white and an open jet intake warning. I confirmed this on my GRS video as well. So with two early kits in hand, I decided to build those two specific planes depicted in the photo. Again, the kits were the Minicraft Hasegawa kit JS-027 and the Ace Plastic Model Company kit 150-01. While the ACE kit has ample recess panel lines, what few the Minicraft kit has were raised. Neither were complete nor accurate. My goal was to improve them and make them look as much alike as possible. I started by removing the fuselages, pilots, and cockpits from their sprues. Each kit had a pilot, a crew member, two seats, and a cockpit floor. The ACE kit had a blank front cockpit wall. The Minicraft kit did not. Neither kit had the best fit and finish, with plenty of flash on most parts and slightly mismatched mold halves on the detail parts. Furthermore, the cockpits were extremely basic, a far cry from the awesome trumpeter kit. These were going to take a lot of work and a little scratch building to bring them up to snuff. I did a lot of filing and sanding to get rid of the flash and sprue connection stumps. The ACE kit's panel lines included these oval shapes. At first I recreated them on the Minicraft kit, but none of my references showed anything like them, so I decided to fill them with super glue and sand them away. The remaining ACE panel lines may not be precisely accurate, but with a few additions they provide an acceptable representation. I recreated them on the Minicraft. The A5 carries its tail hook internally. To model it in this way, the lower rear fuselage parts need adjustment. I glued the hook doors in the closed position. Then I cut the hook and hinges off the rod slash door parts and glued them in the closed position. The ACE kit had a pretty good fit. The Minicraft kit, however, did not. So I decided to replace its rod slash door parts. I traced the openings onto sheet styrene and cut out new ones with my number 11 blade. The new ones definitely had a better fit. During my internet search, I came across this part in 1-48, and it made me curious. The engine's intakes are actually set well back in the fuselage. Tubes run from the exterior intake opening back to the engine intake. Since neither kit even had openings inside their intakes, 
I decided to recreate these structures with tubing and 1 to 144 Boeing 707 engine fan blades. I traced holes for the openings on the fuselage halves, then traced the intake openings over that to show how much I had to file back the intake openings, which I did by repeatedly test fitting. Then I cut the tubes to size. To better represent the upper interior walls of the intakes, I cut new ones out of sheet styrene and attached them to reveal the new openings at the right height. Then I drilled holes for the intake openings in the fuselage parts and test fitted and opened and improved the intakes to the fuselage sides. Finally, I test fit all the tube slash engine blade parts in the fuselages held by sticky tack. Both kits came with blank tail pieces and no openings, let alone any engines beyond the exhaust fins. So I decided to replicate those as well. I drilled and filed openings in the tail pieces and exhaust parts. I found two sets of exhaust that would work in my spares box. For the mini kit, I glued the spare exhaust directly to the kit exhaust parts, then test fit them in the tail part. I used different spares for the ACE kit, which I had to glue inside the fuselage. They'll be visible through the opened exhaust parts once assembled. I painted all the exhaust parts, intake tubes, and blades with Model Master stainless steel metalizer. The cockpits on both kits were extremely basic, and the crew members required a lot of cleanup. I scraped off the flash and filed down the seams to make them as presentable as possible. Then I test fit them, the seats, and cockpit floors. To create cockpit wall panels, I traced the cockpit floor and panel top onto the fuselage halves. Then I cut trapezoids out of thicker sheet styrene to fit those spaces. Then I turned my attention to painting the crew. Olive drab on the uniforms, black boots, gray hoses and face masks, white helmets and clipboards, and testers 1116 cream on the hands and faces. Then I made ejection handles out of stretch sprue and test fit them to the pilot seats. With all the components ready, I constructed the cockpits. I glued the panels to the walls, then styrene strips perpendicular to represent the control tops. I glued new front cockpit walls in place, and I super glued ample fishing weights into the noses. I painted the cockpit interiors of the fuselage halves and both sets of cockpits model master engine gray. I reduced and printed some internet cockpit panel images to install later. Next I fabricated the heads-up display type instrument and another dashboard piece of equipment with sheet styrene, spare clear plastic, and leftover photo etch parts. I then test fit these new parts along with the ejection handles and the canopies. I painted and attached the ejection handles, then glued the crews into their seats. Then these sub-assemblies and control images into the fuselage halves to complete the cockpits. I glued the fuselage sides together and when dry, I glued the forward top fuselage pieces in place with Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. Once dry, after taping off the underwing hardpoint openings and filling them with thick superglue, I constructed the wings. Working from references, I used my scribing tools and rivet tool to add panel lines and rivet rows to the totally blank tail cones. With all the subcomponents ready for assembly, before I could do any more panel line scribing, I cemented the intakes to the underside of the forward upper fuselage and to the lower fuselage over the intake openings. Next, I attached the tail cone pieces with Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. On the ACE kit, I made sure to glue the engine exhaust inside the fuselage before attaching the tail cone piece over them. With the fuselages complete, I resumed marking and scribing panel lines to make the two planes as similar as possible. On the ACE kit, the fuselage piece had the forward half of the panel lines around the rear wing attachment hole. I basically scribed the mirror image on the tail cone piece. Then I drew the general outline on the Minicraft kit and used my scribing templates for precise placement and shape. On the fuselages, the ACE kit had some panel lines, but I added more, mostly lengthwise. The Minicraft had almost none. I drew the panel lines to match the ACE, then scribed them with a straight edge and a scribing tool. Next, I cemented on the nose cones. I had purchased two master model brass pitot tube and AOA probe sets. The kit noses were way too bulbous, so I sanded them gradually down to more of a point to match up with the base of the tubes. 
To add more detail, I drew lines inside some panel lines, then rolled over them with my new 1 to 72 rivet wheel. Next, I prepared the reconnaissance system pod, known as the canoe. I blacked out the camera windows and painted black beneath the clear parts before I glued them on. Then I cemented the canoes in place. Next, I glued the heads up and equipment pieces into the cockpit dashboards, then painted them and the outer edges flat black. I also reattached and touched up the ejection handles. Dried after having dipped them in pledge floor wax, I masked the canopies, revealing a perimeter around the outer edge. Then I wiped them with a lint-free cloth and attached them with Formula 560 canopy glue. Next, I masked the rest of the glass, including the rear cockpit windows, the camera windows in the canoe, and added rivets around them. To install the AOA probes, I drilled holes in the appropriate spots, then test fit them, then attached them with a single drop of thin super, super glue. I made pilot holes at the center of the nose cones, located the correct size mini drill bit, and drilled holes to accept the pitot tubes. I test fit them and set them aside. The tail cone has two detail pieces. Underneath is a fuel dump tube and another structure on top. The kits provide basic representations of them. I opened up the ends of the fuel tubes with my pinned vise drill and trimmed the other structure with my number 11 blade to match references. I removed the clear parts called blisters, painted the fuselage black under where I attached them, and masked them according to references. References showed a tail light structure on the tail rudder. The clear part is round and wrong. I used it and a few spare tidbits to construct the light structure, then masked where the light lenses should be. The rear landing gear required cleanup of flash and ejection pin marks. The kits have separate spotlight parts and clear lenses for the front gear. The curved piece on the front gear is incorrect, so I removed it. I cemented the spotlights in place, then colored the faces silver before attaching the lenses. Then I masked the lenses with sticky tack. Later, after painting, the silver will show through the clear part and look like a spotlight. Next, I painted the tail cones and wing leading edges Model Master stainless steel. After they dried, I masked them off. With all the parts ready for paint, I ensured I had all the colors to achieve the paint schemes. Then I cleaned each part with Windex and vinegar. I made Lego block supports to help me hold the wings level while attaching them with thick super glue and Tamiya cement. My youngest helped me out. So what we're going to do, I'm going to glue it two ways. So I'm going to put thick glue on here. And then once I have that in there, then like we said before, you're going to take this and you're going to brush it right on that seam, okay? while I hold it together, okay? So in time lapse here, what I'm doing is brushing on the um, thick super glue uh, onto the wing inserts as well as in the holes uh, that accept them. Um, so now there's thick super glue inside there um, that eventually will fuse together um, and hold the core, so to speak. Uh, and now my daughter is brushing on the Tamiya uh, thin cement, ultra thin cement, I believe it is. Um, and that, through capillary action, um, gets between the two surfaces and melts them. And the plastic actually melts together. Uh, so then uh, we repeat the process again um, for the other plane. And uh, again, the Lego blocks are there so that I can hold them against the plane and down against the blocks and know that uh, they'll be straight and level uh, just so it happened worked out um, that the blocks stacked like that were the exactly the right size and my daughter really helped me out here by uh, gluing these together there, can I go now? Um, yeah thanks with the wings attached, the planes and parts were ready for the first main color, Insignia White. For handholds, I pressed crumpled up masking tape onto the plane tops and held the rear wings and tail rudders, each in their own clamp. I taped all the other parts to cardboard. The next thing we're going to do is paint the uh, fuselages and all the other pieces white. And to do that, I just got a new airbrush. It is the Talon 
um, by Pache. You can see the old one that I've been using in the background. This is uh, a double action. I've had a double action before, um, the Aztec, but uh, it went bad and I've been using the old single action for quite a while. So this is my first time I'm gonna be using my new Pache Talon uh, double action airbrush. I'm going to fill this up. I set my uh, air pressure at 20. Once complete, I set aside all the white parts to dry. Next, I airbrushed the exhaust parts Model Master Exhaust Buffing Metalizer. Then I stuck all the tires on toothpicks and painted them Model Master Flat Black. I hand brushed the edges of all the landing gear doors insignia red. Before masking for the upper gray, I temporarily attached the upper rear gear doors in place with balls of sticky tack. To mask the 101 plane, the ACE kit, I opened my GRS and cruise book references on my computer and used Tamiya tape to mimic the separation lines on each side. I then masked from that tape line down with Tamiya tape, painter's tape, and Parafilm M masking film. On the 106 plane, the Minicraft kit, the separation lines run straight along a lower panel line and back from just above the bottom of the intake. After attaching the upper detail structure to the tail cone, the upper surfaces were now ready for gray paint. I then airbrushed the fuselages and the rear wing tops with Tamiya XF20 gray. And with that, the overall paint schemes were now complete for both planes. I then masked the, and airbrushed the noses, light gray on the 106 plane, and a way too yellow color on the 101 plane, which I later repainted with an actual radome tan. I went around and touched up any misses or imperfections with the gray. To hold the planes while airbrushing, I made handles from dry cleaner hangers. For a smooth surface for the decals, I airbrushed the entire planes and rear wings with pledge floor wax. Finally, I attached all the landing gear and doors with tiny drops of thick superglue. I was now ready for decals. Here's what I used. Starfighter decal set 700-53 has the Carrier Air Wing 9 artwork. They created custom 1-72 decals for me, which were actually a bit too large, but it gave me the artwork to make correct sized ones with my printer. Microscale 72-93 and 94 are aftermarket sets for the RA-5C Vigilantes of several different squadrons. They gave me the open and closed intake warnings, letters, numbers, and common markings. Scalemaster sets SM-15A and 15B are U.S. Navy Marine lettering and numbers, and I used microscale black detail stripes. I used bits and pieces from my decal spares box and I made the squadron emblem, markings, and some BU numbers on my computer and printer. For the Smoking Tiger squadron emblem, all my references showed the same thing. The smoke cloud is above the red outline ring and the tiger faces the same way, to the right, on both sides. None of my decal sets are correct, so to be historically accurate, I would have to make my own. Starting with the internet image on the left, I printed three of them at 8.5 by 11 then literally cut out and pasted together the cloud, sections of the red border, and blue background. I widened the cloud just a bit to create the image in number three. 
Then I twice reduced that down to 25% of the original, made four of those, and finally printed them out on decal paper. Later, I cut them very closely from the carrier film before applying. For the tail, I had contacted Starfighter to create their decals in 1 to 72, but the tail NG decals were a bit too large. With my printer, I repeatedly reduced them and test fit the images until I achieved the right size. Then I printed them on decal paper and later cut the carrier film very closely before applying them. Starting with the tails, I cut the appropriate BU numbers from the Scale Master letter number set. I cut the NG decals from their carrier film and test fit everything. Then I taped the tails to my cutting mat and used the grid lines to help line up the decals as I laid them down. Beginning with the squadron specific decals for each plane, the microscale sets for the RVAH 11 and 13, which I easily made into RVAH 1s. In the spares box, I found appropriately sized and slanted 1s, 0s, and 6s and applied those. Then I applied the open intake warnings and the Navy slash RVAH 1 decals on each side. For the small fuselage BU numbers, I scavenged what I could from the microscale sets, but had to copy and print some of them on decal paper to get more 7s for the 101 plane. I applied those and the rest of the squadron specific decals on both planes. On the custom Smoke and Tigers decal, I cut them tightly from the carrier film and I cut the Efficiency Award E's from the Scale Master lettering set. Because I printed them on clear decal film, the underlying paint scheme showed through the translucent decals. So I made more to double them up when I applied the rest of the common marking decals. Working from my GRS reference videos and the microscale decal instructions, I cut out the required common marking decals. Starting with the 101 plane, I laid the common markings down from front to back on both sides. I used the GRS reference photos to precisely place the cockpit area decals, which don't include the yellow rescue arrows and boxes. To ease the application of the no-step warning decal over the AOA probe, I poked a hole in the decal before floating it. I finished up the common markings down the sides of the 101 plane. For the striping on the tail hook parts, I cut slightly oversized sections of microscale parallel black stripe decal and applied them over these parts. Once they dried enough, I carefully trimmed them to conform to the part edges. Then I placed the rest of the common markings on the bottom of the plane. I found appropriate sized and slanted ones in the spares box and test fit them on the wings per GRS reference. I cut two sets of nose steps, four for each wing and one for each rear wing and applied them accordingly. On the 106 plane, I again used a GRS reference photo to precisely place the cockpit area decals, which do include the yellow rescue arrows. I brush coated all the decals with pledge floor wax to seal them down and prepare the planes for weathering. Starting with the rear wings, I applied Tamiya panel line solutions, let them dry, then cleaned them up with cotton swabs dipped in mineral spirits and tightly wrung out. Starting on the 101 plane, I used regular gray solution on the white parts, dark gray on the gray parts, and black on the functional lines like control surface separations and hatch seams. I repeated the process on the 106 plane, which had some raised panel lines, which ended up not standing out quite as well as the recessed ones did. Next came attaching all the remaining parts. I glued the exhausts into their openings on both planes. I removed the fuel dump tubes from their sprues and attached them with a dot of superglue. I masked the canopies with Parafilm M and sprayed the rear wings, tails, and planes with Tester's Dull Coat. To ensure the rear wings went on straight and level, I put Lego supports and cardboard shims below them, then glued the wings in place with thick superglue. The last parts to go on were the brass pitot tubes in the noses. Then I peeled off the canopy masks and the planes were complete. Here they are in front of the photo that inspired them.
While I bought the Trumpeter Kit 03420, 1 to 700 Vigilantes, I thought the Revel Enterprise Kit provided planes actually had a more accurate shape and lines, so I decided to go with them. In addition to the Revel planes, I used Starfighter 700-53 decal set, Carrier Air Wing 9 1968, which contains six of these Vigilante decals, of which I'd be using four. I would use the Trumpeter landing gear, as the Revels don't have any. I also used the insignias and navies from its decal set. I scraped, sanded, and generally cleaned up the planes. I removed their wheel pegs to be replaced by Trumpeter landing gear, which I removed from its sprues. Test fitting a tail decal to the Revel planes revealed it wouldn't fit. I test fitted it on a Trumpeter tail piece and it fit just right, so I removed the Revel tail rudders to be replaced by Trumpeter tails. I attached the landing gear with droplets of thick superglue. To represent the exhausts, I cut the front wheels off of Trumpeter F4 Phantom landing gear. Then I trimmed and attached some of the former wheel pegs to represent the tail cones. Then I attached the wheels to represent the exhausts. Finally, I attached the Trumpeter tail rudders and the 1 to 720 planes were built. I attached the planes to cardboard with sticky tack, then painted them white on all sides. I masked all the upper control surfaces, then masked the fuselages according to the two types of planes. Then I airbrushed the planes gray, and when dry, carefully unmasked them. I went around the planes and hand brushed touch-ups. I started with the white, then the gray, then silver on the leading edges of the wings and tail cones, then the exhausts, then I painted the tires black and painted light gray on the 102-106 noses and radome tan on the 101-105 noses. With the paint schemes complete, I hand brushed pledge floor wax on all the planes and testers number 1539 sapphire blue metal flake to simulate the canopy glass. The planes were now ready for decals and I prepared the materials to apply them. I closely trimmed the carrier film around each decal then I cut them out and lined them up for application, floating each one in just a drop of water. Starting at the bottom, I placed the insignia on the wing. Then I laid each decal one by one down the sides, front to back. I finished with the numbers on the wing flaps. Then I repeated this process for the rest of the planes. Finally, I hand brushed red paint to fill in the jet intake warnings on the 101 and 105 plane. And with that, the 1 to 720 Smoke and Tiger Vigilantes were complete. I place two of the 720s on the Enterprise deck. When I do final placement of all the planes, vehicles, and crew, I'll probably cut and represent the wings folded, but I'll make that decision at the time. So with the 1-720 Smoke and Tigers on the flight deck and the 1-72 Vigilantes on the shelf, this build is complete. Next on the project, I'm building the classic Fujimi E-2A Hawkeye kit for the VAW-112 Golden Hawks. Until then, check out the Mighty JJK channel for other project builds, and soon I'll be adding more videos of subjects I've built in the past. Thanks for watching, and happy modeling.